Hey, this is Chuck from Monocoque Metalworks. We're continuing to move forward with the construction and I guess more of a reconstruction of this outside bonnet latch roadster shell. You've already seen the first three parts of this series, hopefully, where we build up the floor and sill assembly and then we restored and reattached the forward bulkhead. Well, now we are reattaching what's left of the tail and it isn't much. And so we've taken what's left. Now you'll see there's a lot of angry, rusted stuff still up here. And some of that will probably come out and just be repaired with small patches and things. But we want to leave as much as we can now. And this is so I don't take my eye out with that sharp point. What we've been working on so far, and we're really down to the wire here. We've got a few more days that we've got left that we can work on this. We've been rebuilding the rear chassis legs. And if you look in here, this entire front portion is our piece that we've replaced. And then up in here, there's a little ear assembly that we've also replaced. And you can see we've got it in our jigs. We had to have that to get this all in the right spot with various shims and things. So now all of this is in the perfect location. And we've also used other jigs to check the location of this wall. You can actually see some scratch marks on it there where we have a whole tail jig that sets in there. So all of this is exactly where it needs to be. The floor and the front bulkhead are also exactly where they need to be. But with the floors that we've used and the inner sills, this manufacturer tends to make their inner sills and their floors a little short. And so what we're gonna do next is position this rear bulkhead panel. Now, I do wanna show you this. We're very proud of this. And I've got some shadows here. This is the first one of these that we have made. And I can see that Brent is zooming in on that oval shape. It is exact. The shape, the placement, the curvature, the way the outside edge is crisp, but the inside edge is soft. We have some special machinery that we use to make this. You can get this panel from another manufacturer. It is this embarrassing thing that is too wide, uh, too high, and then these ovals are in the wrong place, and they're just kind of a general representation of this. So we were very happy with how this turned out. It was a group effort. Um, even Steve was involved with some of the machining on the mold pieces. So this is gonna get dropped down in here next. And we still need to do some trimming of this bottom edge to fit around these chassis legs. And that's, that's correct, that's how that goes. We're gonna do that next. But one thing that Going back to the fact that these inner sills are a little short, what I've been doing on these lately is positioning them properly in the front based on the jigs. Then, once I know where this is, see, this is correct, but then this is too short. And I don't know if you can see from the angle there, but we're about 3 16 to a quarter inch too short. Now, what I could do is just bend this flange and spot weld it, or bend this bend this piece with the ovals in it forward a little bit and spot weld it. That's what they would have done at the factory. I'm just too precise for that. It drives me crazy. So what I will do is cut this flange off. I'll use straight edges to get the exact positioning and then I'll just re-weld on a new flange that's in the exact right spot. So that's gonna happen next. And then after that, stay right there. We'll be putting in this final piece of the hidden subframe. This bar is gonna go right down in here. It will go right through the drive shaft tunnel. All right, and we've got a special drive shaft tunnel here. This is our piece as well. Now, the only thing special about this is that it doesn't have seat belt holes in it. All right, and the reason it doesn't <laughs> Get a little hectic. Sorry, we've been we've been really under the gun. Stay there. Early cars like this, 
have the seat belts both in the floor in the back corners of the seating area. Now on most E-types, this seat belt uh, mount is right here, but then the other one is on the drive shaft tunnel. But in the early cars, it is in a little bracket that looks just like this. This is actually a little bit thicker than the original. These I made up this morning. And then they go under here and they will go right there. Now this manufacturer has put a pretty big hole in the floor there. It didn't need to be quite that big, but that is where that goes. So these will get spot welded in. You can see we've already sprayed the weld through primer on. We will position that tunnel. And now we also always like to use, if possible, the original uh, handbrake pocket piece. And so you can see in there where this had some rust. I sandblasted it and repaired that. It's all taken care of now. And then on the back side, it's, all, it's a little rusty and, and crusty. So it's been sprayed with red oxide and we've left the edges bare so we can do some spot welding. So that's gonna go in there too. I guess you can come around back here. Like I said, the tail is not real fancy and it remains to be seen how much of it will be kept and not. But one thing we absolutely wanna keep is this side panel right here. This is the early outside latch side panel style. These little shapes are a little bit different. And what I really love about this car is that it's a late outside latch car. And I showed this in the intro video for this. The right hand side boot side panel is the super early kind. And the left hand side is the later kind. So you'll see the impressions in there are similar, but they're a little bit different. I love that this car has one of each on it. Now, last night I took a tape. This is a whole a manufacturing hole. It doesn't do anything on the car, but I have often used this hole to help me make sure everything is aligned. Even though the jigs kind of do that automatically, you don't know if when this car was built, this all got a little cockeyed. And actually, let's step back for a second. I had to cut this plate off of here, this portion. And again, some people would say, well, why not replace the whole chassis leg? I don't want to lose my way. This is all the way it was, although we found out the factory was a little sloppy with these and they were a little cockeyed. Stay right there. Just kind of zoom in on something and look at something for a minute. <laughs> This is why those got replaced. They kind of looked all right from the outside. Sorry, I'll try to stand still. But here's what the inside looked like. And so we went ahead and cut those out. That was an embarrassingly time-consuming task. Hours and hours. But there's a nice new piece of 18 gauge in there. You can see it was stitched in, ground down. It's still got that little shape. So that's all where it needs to be. But anyway, coming back to this hole, in the past, I have used this hole to help me make sure I've got good alignment. And I took a tape measure last night and dropped down from this hole to the frame table, which we know is dead straight and flat. And we are within a 16th of an inch side to side. And that, that's as close as these cars ever get. So everything's coming together nicely. We're gonna pull this back off. As you're doing this, these things go in and out of the jig 15 times. Um, and then we're gonna finish up by putting the gussets. These are our heavy duty 16 gauge gussets, part of the subframe. Usually these are 20 gauge. This obviously goes right in here. All right. And then here, are the uh, gearbox side panels. Brent made these up special for this car. They are an absolute replica of what would be on an early car like this. This flange up here is a little bit shorter and these holes don't have a tipped edge. The early cars, instead of having a tipped edge and a rubber plug, they just had a regular sized hole and there's a metal plug that goes in there. So those are the types of things with this car that we're really trying to pay attention to. 
So that's where we are for now. We've still got a heavy couple of days ahead of us to finish this up. And then our work on this one will be done. We'll be taking it to the other shop and they'll finish up. But they'll be finishing up with this, which is all dead straight, square, jigged up, everything's great. And then they can just move forward with this. All right, stay tuned and we'll show you that all getting done. Okay, I am now making the little pieces that go in here and it's it's not much you know it's it's about three sixteenths of an inch but I just like everything to be straight I can't I can't, I can't do it <laughs> so it, you know but I it, there is a a argument to be made to just pull this in and, and do it but I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up Okay, this is that same seam now that it has been welded on and ground down. You can see I've only added on about 3 16 or so, and I only need to go down to there. And I've done the other side as well. You can tell by the way I'm standing that the tail has been removed. See, there's the other side. And see, I've, I've made this, this thin right here and that will allow us to wiggle this around and change it as we pull everything into place. You'll see that same type of corner on the tail of a fixed head coupe. If you look up in there around the license plate, you see that exact same little treatment. But anyway, you can see I've got a line drawn on here now. Everything's been fitted. We're gonna put that subframe tube in here. I'll put a little paint in there first and we will make sure we jack these corners up and get everything straight. That is next. Okay, we have finished welding in this rear bar that's part of the hidden subframe. You can see it goes across right through the drive shaft tunnel and that won't interfere with anything. Then there we've got it welded to the radius cup plate. That's going to keep that from working its way out. And that's especially important on an early car like this that has a shorter plate and a separate plate for the safety strap. And there you can see we've welded it there to the inner sill as well. That nut that's welded on the end is there so that I can mount a fixture to keep this straight while we're welding it in place. You can actually bend this bar quite a bit while you're straightening everything out and clamping the floor to it. So you want to make sure that stays straight. And now we are going to go ahead and map out where the drive shaft tunnel goes. We'll spot weld that in and we'll also put those seatbelt anchors into these holes. All right, we're moving forward. Last night I welded in this bar and I got everything all fitted. This morning I doctored up the drive shaft tunnel by welding in the handbrake pocket. And so we are now spot welding that down onto the floor. So I'll give you guys a couple action shots here. It takes time to just kind of maneuver these just right, you know. Want to hit the drive shaft wall. I got my lines on there so that's just one less thing I got to think about right now and that's a good idea whether you're spot welding or plug welding. Okay we're really moving at top speed now because I wanted to get this done tonight. We've got two more hours to go and I think we're just gonna make it. So this piece is in here now. You can see where it has been spot welded all along this bottom edge. It has been spot welded around there. Notice how the drive shaft tunnel sticks out a little bit at the top and not the bottom. That's because of the angle of it being made out of a piece with a 90 degree there. That's exactly how the factory did it. And so you'll, you'll see it like that. 
but this is all taken care of. There's our weld through where we are mating up the rear chassis leg. And we've got some in the front as well where those stiffeners are gonna go in. And we are gonna go ahead and mount the tail section, which is ready to go. Sitting right here, this place is a mess, but that's all right. There's the tail section, and there's our chassis leg repairs. That's a new piece in there. So we're gonna get this in here. And get her mounted up. Okay, it's a big moment. The tail's all mounted up in the jigs and we're gonna slide it forward now. Well, we just finished another really long day of really great progress. The tail is now attached. And you can see where we've put the uh, stabilizer pieces in that go behind the rear bulkhead. They're actually inside the rear bulkhead. And you can see that we have spot welded this. It's a triple layer here. So you're grabbing the chassis leg forward section and this rear bulkhead panel and the stabilizer all at once and spot welded together. We've spot welded those but I've also just gone ahead and run a bead of MIG weld along the edge. This is totally unseen, doesn't hurt anything. It just adds to the strength. Down here, we've put a nice bead all around this. And see, this is where you're getting that pushing up of the reaction plate into this radius arm cup plate. And so you're not gonna have any wiggling anymore now. Now I did also put those beads back here and they can be ground down a little bit, covered up with undercoating. But in an area like this, I feel it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, these were actually weak spot welds originally. And when we pull the cars apart, we can pop those apart with our hands a lot, especially on this inner piece, the 16 gauge. Now I am confident in our spot welds but I do like to just put those on there. Sometimes I call those safety beads. Um, there's a couple places I'll use them and this is one of them. And so you can see we've also taken the spot welder and gone inside and put all of those spot welds in there. Um, that's in addition to all that little tacking that we did last night. And uh, I don't know, that might've been two nights ago. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been kind of a blur lately. But there it is. And we've only got one thing left to do before we hand it off to another shop. And, you know, I'd like to finish the car and that was the original intention, but we're so backed up and we've got an opportunity to work with that other shop and move the project along. So we'll provide the panels from here out. They'll provide the work and we'll get it done that way. We do need to add in the heavy duty sill gussets. And that's this piece right here. It's a little different than the factory gusset. And so we will fit that in. You'll see this notch here is way too low. The vertical cut right along here, that's correct. But this top cut needs to be notched out so that it goes up in there. But I always give a lot of extra material because I never know where people are gonna put their tube. We put our tube very high on these. Some people put them lower. I don't know, I guess high is right since it's my design. <laughs> I like to put it up against that stiffening rib there. But, so I will notch those out tonight and um, we'll just get those set in place as well. So that's it. That's gonna be the last part of this one. And I will give you a little update as soon as we get these put in place.